the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We've been making these God sighting videos, basically just asking church folks, where have you seen God lately? And evidently you keep seeing God in all kinds of places. Enjoy. God sightings. This is Carol Ann Weisberger. Hi everyone. Hope everything is going well at your homes. Stay safe. Stay safe. Um, what I wanted to talk about today were God sightings that have come to my my being, my home, uh, everything that I I couldn't even imagine happening. The first week of our being held in hostage here. Um, two people from Oakland Avenue Presbyterian Church walked up to my house with a meal for two days. And actually it lasted me four days. And then all of a sudden people started calling me, friends, uh, people I used to work for, and they wanted to bring groceries over any way they could help. Um, the outpouring of love is always great from the churches, Oakland Avenue Presbyterian and also Philadelphia United Methodist Church. Um, sent cards. They um, they made sure that I had water, that I that I was doing okay, that I didn't need to go to a doctor or anything like that. Um, and then on top of it, Philadelphia had set up a, not Philadelphia Oakland Avenue had set up a call thing so that people would touch base with others during the times of being alone. Being alone is not easy. It's, um, it's an empty feeling. I, I can't really explain it. Even though I'm busy with all my arts and crafts and everything, there's just that, that lull in communication and um, just people being worried and feeling differently about things, how they were going. Um, and as much faith as you had, everyone was a little bit scared, I think. I don't think that anybody got past that being scared. I know the children were scared of my mask. I don't know if that's one indication, but I know most children didn't like us wearing those masks. It's kind of frightening for them, I guess. But um, I really I really just couldn't believe um, everything. And when this uh, God sighting started, and I got to see the children that I miss so much, and they were either playing an instrument or reading a scripture or, or just being them and um, just seeing their smiling faces um, and then seeing others where they were out in their gardens and also seeing um, those people who uh, just were, you know, putting up pictures of birds and animals and and all these things that we could ver hear very clearly now that we usually don't hear. We don't, they're buried in the cacophony of everything that's going on in our lives. And um, I think that the God sightings have just been amazing and they're daily. And um, I, I hope that people that are opening up, uh, soft openings, whatever they're doing, that they really take care of themselves um, and understand that. The, uh, the this time the client is not right. This time the person has the business is right. So we have to take that into consideration. Um, for me too, it's been all the nurses and doctors and um, firemen, police, everyone who've been out there every day, no matter what. Um, when this first happened, I had to call an ambulance because I, I couldn't breathe. And, um, the ambulance came and I just laid there in the ambulance thinking, here they are exposing themselves 
you know, right here and now to the virus uh, just by taking care of me. But they were thorough and they did everything that needed to be done. So it, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And I do hope as we go back that we can find it in our hearts to, to stay some of this the way it is now. Closeness to each other, close to our families, walking outside, just, just being and being God's people. Thank you. If God's dead, um, how can he come back alive when he's dead? Because Jesus and God might not be the same thing what you th think, but how is God dead when he can have magic to keep himself alive again? Basically, how can God and Jesus be the same thing if Jesus can die and God can't? Yeah, because who's dead? Like, who keeps him alive? God can't keep his dying alive when the, when those two are the same thing. Okay. Action! Hey, Zoe, thank you for your question. It's a really, really good question. It's a really, really smart question. And a lot of really, really smart people have asked the same question. And the answer, or the answer that I like the most, uh, is actually has a fancy name. Maybe some grown-ups out there would want to look it up. It's called Extra Calvinisticum. Extra Calvinisticum. So here's the question. So the Bible says that Jesus is God and that the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in Jesus. So all of God went into Jesus. So we pretend that the water is God. So all of God was in Jesus. But if all of God is in Jesus, who was Jesus praying to? And how could God raise Jesus from the dead if all of God was here? And if all of God was here, who was over there making the sun come up or protecting the birds or doing all the other stuff God was doing? Well, the answer is that we're thinking of God too small. God is more than just this. God isn't like the water in a glass. God is more like the water in a faucet. God is so big. God is infinite. And the fullness of God was in Jesus, but it was also everywhere else at the same time. You see, God is so big. God was completely in Jesus, and God was spilling out all over the place, everywhere else too. I know that's a, that's a hard thing to think about, but we have to remember that God is infinite. And God can't be contained. I hope that works. I, ho I hope that, uh, that helps as an answer. And uh, if you have any more questions, please send them along and I'll try my best. Thanks, Zoe. Stay smart.